Up next, I would love to uh, have you all help me welcome a very special guest speaker. Um, he's no stranger to the Hmong community and certainly one of the strongest partners of, of the exhibit and with the History Center. Please help me welcome State Senator Fong He. Well, today's a happy day. I want to remember this. I know I, this is probably the first time I, I do this. I may continue to do it again, but this, this is history in the making, making our history. So I want to take picture of the audience so that I have everybody. <laughs> and 40 years from now, I can share with my grandchildren or maybe even end up as, as a his, 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 historical exhibit. <laughs> I'm going to use the panoramic view so I have everybody. <laughs> well, Nya Zhong, Nya Zhong, and thank you. Thank you, everyone, and uh, welcome to the We Are Hmong exhibit. Uh, thank you to Minnesota Historical Center Society, uh, CEO uh, Steve Aylett, and uh, the st uh, state legacy funding for making this possible, and everyone involved for making this exhibit uh, for us today. Uh, before I speak further, I want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that the Lao Hmong Veteran Memorial will be built this year at the State Capitol Ground. <laughs> the groundbreaking will be scheduled for May and uh, to be completed in September. And one more time, I bow my head to uh, the Hmong Veteran as a Hmong descent and also as a State Senator of Minnesota. I'm, I'm honored I have seen many of you here this morning as well. This year, 2015, marks the, mar the 40th year of my people, the Hmong people, leaving our home country of Laos. 40 years ago, I was 10 years old. I remember Long Chang, my birthplace, and the grand operation there. I remember the moment my father's Laos, loud and commanding voice suddenly changed to whisper because communist regime took over our, our home country. I remember keeping my younger sibling quiet as we hid in a thicket for hours to avoid being captured by our enemies. I remember throwing away a heavy lo load of luggage into the Mankong River to keep our boat afloat as we crossed it. I remember the first time being hungry in the confinement of the refugee camp in Thailand. I remember the wailing, the long and loud crying of our elders as the plane take off from Bangkok airport, leaving Asian soy because our elders thought they would never see their home country again. There was just my story among the thousands of Hmong stories Sadly, many of our people perished along the way and couldn't share their story with us. Let's not forget them. Then a new story began. Like any story, there has a beginning. In November 1975, the first Hmong family arrived in the land of 10,000 Lake. I'm happy to say that there were my aunt and Uncle Dang Her and Shou Mo, I, I, know, I know you're here somewhere. Uh, are you here? Please give our day in the corner there. <laughs> thank, thank you for joining us this morning. I will see them as the Hmong Ed and Eve of Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> then the rest of us follow. The rest of us follow. The first 10 years of Hmong life in the U.S. was spent adjusting to this great country. Hmong families moving from state to state, searching for opportunity and reuniting with their kin. St. Paul became the magnet of our Hmong community. Then came the second 10 years. Those who were brought as children grew up to take leadership role. Many took the uh, first Hmong titles in their own profession like the first Hmong medical doctor, like Dr. Ho Shang, Dr. Lor, the first Hmong lawyer like Christopher uh, Tang Tao, 
the first Hmong farmer, the first Hmong grocer, the first Hmong public elected official, Ms. Cho Lee. I know she's here somewhere. Everybody give her a applaud for that too. And, and I too took pride in being the first Hmong television producer. <laughs> working on a show called Gei Gong Sha, Path to Unity. That was eons ago and syndicated various to, in various Hmong communities across the United States. Then came the third decade of Hmong life in the U.S. where we earned enough income by buying homes and forming communities in Frogtown area, Eastside St. Paul, North Minneapolis, and Brooklyn Park. We built Hmong markets Hmong Town Markets, we built Hmong Village Shopping Center, and even self-proclaimed our favorite spot at the Phelan Picnic Ground as the Hmong Island. <laughs> Many of us became self-sufficient and we were able to bring those that were left behind in the refugee camp in Thailand to be with us here. We came, a, we came a long way to, in this country, my fellow Hmong American, but there's still so far for us to go. As we step into our 40th year, our community is like a caterpillar transforming herself into a chrysalis. Let's not be dormant. In due time, she will emerge. In due time, she will emerge as a beautiful butterfly. Can we imagine that? Even the Marna butterflies would find their way home. So keep in mind where you came from. Keep in mind we're from a war-torn Laos to America, from the poorest of Americans to be where we are today. Always help those who were like us. Identify yourself as Hmong or Hmong American is good enough, but knowing your past makes you wiser for the future. Keep an open arm for every new American and every old American. Be productive. Participate in your neighborhood, your civic engagement, and go vote. Spread your wing to make Minnesota a better place than when we arrived 40 years ago. And I'm glad the baby is crying today. <laughs> So that tomorrow, so that tomorrow Minnesota still want to remember us, that we are today, we are Hmong. So thank you very much for your, for your time. Thank you for being here.